Welcome to API Days. This session is about API intelligence in an heterogeneous world. I am Bernard Aguindigui, CTO of Ping Identity, and with me is Francois Lassen. Francois? Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Bernard. Nice to be here. Welcome to API Day session. So today, we're going to keep things uh, interactive, and we'll have just very, very few slides. Uh, but we're going to bring in demos as well, demos of what can be done uh, with API traffic. So let's start with a question for Francois. Francois, we run into a lot of customers that are exposing APIs with a lot of very different technologies across different clouds, data centers, sometimes within the same data center or building. How did we ever get there? I know. Uh, I remember doing API management uh, when it's 2010, 2015, you know, organizations, enterprises were setting up API management initiatives. Uh, there was a lot of adoption uh, uh, and a lot of building of in API infrastructure in those days. Uh, and I would hook up with things that were at the time legacy, right? Things like soil governance was becoming legacy. Uh, and that was a great step forward in many of uh, the enterprises that went down that journey. Uh, but then the last few years, you know, if you think 2015, 2020, you are starting to see these multiple API stacks. You, you have a lot of partial assets that migrated into cloud as cloud services, right? So some things move into the cloud, some things stay as, as APIs, those cloud things have their own APIs. Uh, you are building next generation type applications. They have microservice architectures, which tend to expose a lot of APIs with their own uh, in, in a lot of different technology stacks. Um, that's definitely the case. Yeah, that, that's right, Francois. And we've seen teams sometimes in the same company, different business units, selecting different platforms for different reasons. And, and now we are uh, at a time where uh, we have to work with all these different uh, platforms out there. So, but based on this, um, do we think that APIs um, are the right layer uh, to tap uh, when it comes down to getting the right intelligence on what's going on with an API infrastructure? Yeah, I mean, th that is a good question, right? Because you are looking at, um, there are other approaches. There are other layers that people are, are trying to tap to produce intelligence, right? Uh, you can be looking at logs, for example. Uh, you could have runtime agents uh, that would be installed downstream, right? Closer to the endpoints. And, and I think these are great. I don't think there's, there's anything wrong with that. Ideally, I think you would want to be able to maximize your data by looking end to end. But the reality is that the API layer is really a runtime reflection of what your app is doing. It's meant to be easy to tap into because it's meant to reduce friction uh, for all these digital transformation initiatives. So it is meant to be easy to tap into. It's programmatic. It's structured. So for that reason, it is the right layer of abstraction. A API style standards are like universal translators. I'm not saying tap into REST APIs and nowhere else. And, and for example, maybe even event-based interactions are, are becoming more prevalent and you need to look at those as well. And they all have insights to offer REST API, GraphQL, async type APIs, event-driven stuff, all of that. Yes, uh, I, I, I fully agree, uh, Francois. Um, so we do have a lot of fragmented API uh, system out there. Um, how do you look at coalescing uh, all of that traffic uh, to make sense of it? I, I would say you, you can capture metadata from these different sources of API traffic and you can feed this into a unified data lake. Uh, this is what I'm showing here. Uh, and, and from there, you can analyze that data all together. You know, you decouple that intelligence from each of the silos and you pull that metadata from each of these silos in order to aggregate it and, and, and uh, derive insights from that. Yeah, the, 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 the goal is definitely to, to have this 
unified views uh, of all of the traffic happening across all of the data centers, um, clouds, systems. Uh, we're an identity company, and so we've seen a lot of our customers use the user identity to kind of stitch together uh, all of the different threads. Because after all, usually you only see, you know, the traffic by token or maybe a cookie, an IP address, but it's fragmented. So unifying it all under a user and seeing what the user do across all APIs become very key. Once, once you do this, uh, Francois, what kind of insight can you get out of it? Yeah, I'm actually gonna show you the kind of insights that you're gonna get from these different things. Here's my ping intelligence for APIs. Um, you can see all the APIs that uh, are being cataloged here. Um, but it all starts with the discovery of API. So if I go into discovered API, uh, you can see this implementation financial app or GRC function has been discovered. Uh, I could publish this now, it's in manual mode uh, that, that requires a, a published step, but I, first I wanna get some detail about this API, find out more about it. Um, so here I can see the host that it's targeting, uh, implementation at financialapp.org slash GRC function. I can see the different uh, resources, so uh, the exact path and, and what it produces. So that gives me uh, some insights into this API uh, uh, that has been discovered from the start. So eventually I would publish this and, and provide, I have an opportunity here in manual mode to feed Ping Intelligence for APIs with parameters that helps it tag identity information uh, to the API traffic. Um, but eventually that API ends up in one of those uh, API groups. Here I've got three groups, EMEA, North America, uh, and Latin America. So these are different API silos. There are different regions. They could be different clouds. They could be different API gateways. And they each have their own versions of those banking APIs. Now, if I go into the dashboard, I can choose one of those APIs now, um, and I can uh, see the details for that API. So now I will see the API activity for that API only, and the different um, resources that are being access on this API. Uh, I can also see where the traffic is coming from, which IP address, but here's where the identity tagging comes into play. I, I can see the actual users calling this API. And if I, if I zoom in on one of those users, I can see the activity for that user across all those, those APIs, reg regardless of which clouds this comes from, right? It's all together combined. I can see all the tokens, all the resources accessed, uh, all the IP addresses that this user um, is coming from. I can do the same thing with a token, right? What's what's happened with that token over time? I can see the token uh, here being used across multiple APIs uh, in this case as well. So back on the main dashboard here, uh, this is the kind of insights uh, that you get with Ping Intelligence for API. Let's zoom back in the history here, go uh, for the last 60 days. Uh, you will see some of those black lines there. Uh, those are the attacker activity, um, but those attacks aren't necessarily malicious, right? This can be a malfunction. This could be friendly fire. It could just be an abnormality in your API traffic. So you can look into this. I'll give you an example. Uh, I've got on my blacklist here uh, one of the IP addresses that has been flagged. Uh, and you can see that the attack classification is, in this case, unauthorized client attack. Uh, so what really that means is that uh, this uh, this client uh, sent traffic to an API without the token, right? I, I got the attack description here that, that tells me what happens. Uh, so I get additional insights, but that really gives me the opportunity to go and remediate something uh, in the client. Maybe there's a malfunction, something that shouldn't have happened. And so by analyzing uh, the behavior over time for each of the um, API clients, you know, the users, the IP addresses, and the tokens, we have the ability to spot these anomalies and we have the ability to block a client uh, because an anomaly that was triggered. Well, thank you, Francois. That was a great demo. So I understand this type of information is really very valuable from a security point of view as well. So talking about API security, uh, what should be a good starting point for people listening here today? What should they look at first? Yes. 
uh, let's talk about API security. So OWASP API security top 10 is actually a very good starting point. You know, basic API security includes things like access control. Uh, and just like for monitoring, the ability to centralize access control really is going to augment your security posture. So API access control can be core screen. You can have access to an API or not. You can be fine grain. Um, it should include content, content uh, inspection. It, could, it should include input validation, rate limiting. Those are, are usually very good starting point, and you can see those reflected in the OWASP API security talk. Yeah, I, I totally agree, uh, Francois. Uh, those are great starting point, and they're so useful in assessing the risk right, posed by the APIs. But I'm thinking about two specific problems when I'm thinking about this, right? In, is that in the context of, is this enough to properly cover the risk inherent in API infrastructure? So here's the two examples of problems that I see, right? One is an issue with, say, a partner using an API in a way that was not approved. So he's authorized, he's authenticated, he's a normal user, but hey, he's not really the, using the API like he was supposed to. How do I find out about that? And two, the hacking example, right? We know that most hacking happen with hacker posing as valid users. Um, and, and they are using the API to automatically uh, go about attacking uh, the, the, the enterprise or the government, uh, the bank, the insurance company. So after all these problems happen, after authorization was granted. So how do you approach the problem of identifying this abnormal use and hacking with all of this happening after authorization is granted. That's right. That's, that's exactly what the big problem is, right? Uh, you know, when you're wondering, is, is, is that OWASP list enough, right? What OWASP describes are common vulnerabilities. And these are specific to each API, right? So you can hunt down each of these APIs, look for the, those vulnerabilities, um, and you should do that. And, and you're going to get a certain coverage of protection. And different tools are available you know, to add security on top of existing APIs. But a lot of times these are policy-based, right? You add security policies and you apply them to your APIs. It's just hard to foresee ahead of time everything that could go wrong. And ultimately, you can't just keep up with rules, maintenance over time. You have a hard time getting the expertise for it. So the, the need to use an AI to identify abnormal behaviors is really important. Th this is why I need an additional layer of security. Uh, for example, you should be looking for probing. Those are behaviors that lead to uncovering vulnerabilities. And these vulnerabilities that are uncovered are then translated into things like account takeover and data breach. So this secondary layer of security uh, uh, by analyzing behavior offers a more complete uh, coverage against OWASP stuff then, but also for more sophisticated um, attacks. Let me show you, Bernard, a demo of Ping Intelligence in action. I'm gonna go through some scenarios and I'm going to show you how uh, API intelligence reacts. So back on my dashboard here, uh, you can see in my blacklist, I've got a token. So let's go take a look at that token. This is a token that was used in a simulation where there was uh, a missing rate limiting on uh, an API. Uh, and you can see the attack classifications here for uh, that particular API. So if I go into the insights for one of those attack classifications, you will see the information here tied back to the OWASP API security top 10 here. So it's telling me if activity is what is exceeded, uh, you, ask, uh, you have potentially an OWASP API security top 10 vulnerability on your API, uh, which is what we're seeing here. So in the attack insights, I can see 
um, you know, additional API activity information, which helps me uh, uh, remediate back into my API uh, that was missing that, that rate limit here. So ping intelligence detected that um, as a deviation from the model and blocked that token automatically. So that's blocking based on a token, right? But what if a user has a valid account? They, uh, they might have the ability uh, to create as many tokens as they want. So if we're looking now at a more sophisticated attack, uh, you've got somebody that has the ability to generate as many tokens as they can. Let's take a look at what it looks like uh, back in Postman here. I've got my, we call this distributed probing. And you can see in the script of, of the, uh, the attack here, I've got so many tokens for that identity, I can use a new token at every request. Uh, uh, so it's all associated with this valid account insider at my.org, right? This is an identity that's valid. Um, and so they have the ability to get as many tokens as they want. And so what happens is that because we track also on a per user level, uh, when you run that simulation, th this user insider at my.org is, show, is what shows up on that, that blacklist here. So you can see that all these different tokens that have been used by that user, right away you can see that there's something very abnormal here. Yeah. And then the attack classification confirms that indeed this is uh, uh, what we call distributed probing. So there's been probing by a user identity across uh, a number of different tokens, a number of different IP addresses, and that's why it's blocked. There's no, be, there's no policies here. This is a purely behavior-based blocking and security. And so behavior-based, right? So that allows us to do analysis around sequences of API calls, because usually when users call uh, APIs, they do it through client-side applications, which restricts uh, the different sequencing of API calls. And when you've got an attacker they're using outside of that client application, uh, those sequences uh, don't match it, and you can catch it that way as well. So here's uh, another environment in which I've got a user um, that has had an abnormal API sequence attack classification. And you can see that uh, by looking at those uh, forensics here, uh, you can see the sequence is a completely abnormal here. This is another way that through behaviors, we can actually uh, detect these attacks in progress. Okay, thank you, Francois, for another great demo. So, if I understand well, by analyzing behavior in addition to enforcing security policies and rules uh, for my APIs, I get a much better security coverage, right? That's right. Uh, so now back to our heterogeneous world. Uh, what happens if I detect um, a bad user behaving or hacking in, say, uh, my first cloud, cloud one? Right. Can I block it in cloud one and then block it in my other clouds? How does that work? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. That's the centralization of the data that we were talking about. So it's not only helpful for analyzing across all your APIs, but the attack predictions that are made on in one API silo are at, automatically enforced in your other silos. So it's, it's, it's augmenting your uh, security posture that much more from that perspective, you are bringing together your threat detection and enforcing them across all of your gateways, all of your clouds and things like that. Yeah, that's good. That makes sense, Francois. So as you can see, there are several key points that you need to really pay attention to, to properly protect your API infrastructure, right? Your digital projects. You need to to really know in you know inventory your APIs. You need to properly discover all your activity APIs. You gotta know. You cannot protect something you don't know about, right? And you need to tie the API traffic to each user. You need to associate all the tokens, IP addresses used across all API for each user. And then you need to track all API activities, record them keep an active data lake with all of that information for audit, governance, and forensic reports. And then the, the discussion we just had, you need to identify all abnormal behaviors, and that includes cyber attacks on the APIs, and you gotta be able to automatically block them. If you really implement those 
those uh, properly in terms of points that you need to pay attention to, you have a much better, not only a much better understanding of what's happening across your APIs. You'll be able to report on anything that is odd and in terms of behavior and block cyber attacks. So thank you for joining us. I hope this was a useful session for you. And thank you to Francois uh, for those uh, great uh, discussions and, and demos. Thank Francois. you so much. Thank you.